In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Son Holy of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for our lives, Lord. Father, we Father, bless us and surround us with your holy presence. Thank you, Lord, for loving each one of us gathered here, Lord. Fill us with your presence and with our, and our hearts full of love, grace, Lord. Be a lamp to our feet and a light to our light to our unto our path, Almighty Father. Fill our hearts with your love, truth, and grace. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this pulpit, Lord, to share your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking complete control over this session. All of you and nothing of me, Holy Spirit. I give everything into your hands, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and ask. Amen. 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 And amen. Yeah, shall take. Let's uh, go to Numbers chapter 13, 20, verse 25. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, I'll make you the co-host. Yeah, exactly. I just sent you the message and you said. Yes. Sorry, what was the time? Sorry, I didn't hear you. It's Numbers chapter 13, verse number 25. Okay, give me one second. Number 13. So today I would like to share about how God took the Israelites out of Egypt from bondage and brought them out of Egypt and wanted to take them to the promised land of Canaan. Amen. And he spoke to Moses saying that to send some man to the land of Canaan and to search that land and to make a survey of Israel and to send each man from each tribe. So, can you see the screen? Yeah, I can. Okay. Sister, I'll read, right? Yes, please read. Charles, I need the whole thing from 25 to 33, yeah? You told me only 25. Okay, one minute. 25 to 33. Yeah. Where is it? There. Can you see? Yes, I can. Okay. And we returned from searching on of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb steal the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the man up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land 
through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you were you were a bit cutting off, but now it's okay. Okay. So here we see the people of Israel where Moses tells them to go and bring a survey from Canaan. So he chooses 12 people from each of the tribe, the leaders, to go and bring a survey from Canaan. So as we know, this is the situation here. God has brought the Israelites out of Egypt with victory. God has not used any army nor any soldiers. God with his mighty uh, hand has delivered them out of Egypt. He created so many miracles as we know. He made so many miracles in front of Pharaoh to get them out of it. And he took them in out, out on a journey and Pharaoh chasing them. He split the Red Sea. He made a way for them to go out, go out of Egypt and Pharaoh was chasing them and the whole army of Pharaoh was drowned. As we know how God saved the Israelites from the clutches of uh, Pharaoh. And three days later, when the Israelites were, they were thirsty and they found bitter water and they started murmuring and God gave them, created a miracle again and gave them sweet water. God created miracle there also by turning bitter waters into sweet waters. God took care of the Israelites and provided everything, everything for them according to their needs. Now they had almost reached the edge of the border of the promised land. And this land God had already given them. But God wanted them to make a survey and see what survey they would bring. And the report what they would have brought and given to Moses and Aaron and to the congregation of Israel. Yeah? Yes. So these 12 people, they go to Canaan and they see the land. The land is, as God had said, God knows very well what he wants to give us. He will never give us something bad. He will always give us the best. Of course, they went to the land. It was, of course, flowing with milk and honey. It had the best fruits. You know, they had this cluster of grapes, which was so heavy. We must have never seen cluster of grapes so big that two men had to carry it on the staff. Amen. You know? <laughs> They had to carry two had to carry it and bring this they bring the cluster of grapes back to show them to Moses. And they brought some pomegranates and figs. They went through, they explored the whole place of Canaan. They brought figs, they brought pomegranates, and they came back. After 40 days, they came back. And God had told Moses that he had already given the land to them. But, you know, we people, we still, although God has given us everything, we still doubt God. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very true. Even me, I am also one of them. No matter how much miracles he has done yes. in my life, Praise I, God. Still, I still do that. Till date, I do that. <laughs> so, you know, we all we do. Ones, but our God is so merciful and so full of compassion and loves us so much. He's full of love for us. He has only love to give us and nothing else. So here Moses sent them and he waits when these people come after 40 days. So they come in front of Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of Israel. And now they are coming with the report. So now when they come with the report, 
they come with the same 10, 12 people, they come with the report, but the report is not the same. 10 people bring one report, two people bring the, another report. So it is not the same report, yeah? So they, they told them that we came onto the land which you have sent us. Surely this land is flowing with milk and honey. It's, and they brought us fruits with a cluster of grapes. We have never seen such big clusters of grapes, have we? We have yeah. seen small bunches of grapes in the, in the supermarkets, haven't we? We haven't seen so big, such large clusters of grapes, which one carries, with two people have to carry. So imagine what big, what fruits they must be having in, in Canaan. And, and the goodness of their land must be so good. And this was the proof. The fruits were the proof of the goodness of that land. So this, all these 12 agreed with the goodness of the land. Uh, with the land is fertile. The land is good. It's flowing with milk and honey. But the people there are strong. They dwell in the land. The, the land which they dwell are fortified cities. They are walled. They are very great. And they saw the children of Anak. You know what is Anak? Anak are the great giants there. So this was the report the, the 10 people they brought. Okay. So the very interesting thing is now, this 12 people went searching the land, saw the same thing, but out of the 12, 10 brought one report, two brought another report, but the, the, both the reports were not in agreement. And there was a difference. So the difference we find here is Caleb and Joshua, the two, they were saying, let us go right now, not tomorrow. And we will go at once and possess the land. For we are able to overcome it because God had already given them the thing. And since God was with them, they could obviously take over. Amen. So now Caleb and Joshua came with a good report. They were energized with faith. That the, and they were so excited when they went into the land, they saw how great the land was. They remembered God's promises and said, God had already given us this land. They remembered God's miracles, what he had done for them in the wilderness for these two years, how God split the Red Sea and saved them from Pharaoh. Yeah. And they had been with, and God's presence was with them in the day. And, and, and when they were walking in the night, of course, God was with them throughout. And everything what God did for them and helped them in the past, because of all this, whatever God has done for them, they could boldly say, you know, that, come on, how could we doubt when God has done so many things for us? But and Caleb and Joshua were so energized and they were so much in faith that they said, come on, let's go right now. You know, they were not scared about the giants. They didn't see the giants because they knew they could fight the giants. But this 10, they, say, they were saying like, no, 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 we cannot go against these people. They are stronger than us. You know, they are strong. We just feel like, like they are so huge. And we are like small grasshoppers in front of them. Praise we will God. not be able to fight them. And like they were magnifying the problem. Hmm. They, were, they didn't bring God into that situation. They forgot about God. Yes. They were only thinking about those giants they saw in that land. They mm -hmm. forgot everything. They forgot what God told them. God Praise was God. able to do it. You know, when God tells us that he can move the mountains, of course, he, he will never say just like that. When he can do it, he can do it. But it is us, you know, we are full of so much doubt. Doubt. Although they were seen, they were in the wilderness, they saw so many miracles of God. But see, they doubted God. And they were like so scared. They magnified their problem. They didn't bring God in the situation and they forgot everything. They needed to have that faith and nothing else to enter that, you know, land which God had already given them. Now, 
you know, like brothers spoke to us, you know, about a thermometer question and a thermostat question. Now, what is a thermometer question? A thermometer is a instrument, yeah, for measuring and indicating a temperature. We, we all must be knowing because, you know, previously we used to put the thermometer to check the temperature, the temperature of yes. a fever. Yes. And then like, when, it, when the temperature goes down, it will be normal, yeah? Yes. So yes. Our, our faith is like that. When we are in faith, we, when something is going good, we will be like, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We will give all glory to God. And then situations are bad. Seriously, this is even me, you know. I feel so hurt sometimes when I do all these things, you know, which our God doesn't deserve it. Because he's so good. He has done so many things for us in our lives and we still tend to forget it. And our God like still forgets and still he's merciful and still does good things for us. And there are thermostat Christians. There are th this device like thermostat is a device which regulates temperature. And you know, this temperature reaches a certain point, it remains the same. You don't, you don't have to do anything with it. That is a faith. But we, so that faith was of Caleb and Joshua, yeah? yeah? They had that thermostat faith, which they were like energized. They knew like, oh, God is with us, yeah? We can fight any battles. We can fight this uh, giants. What are these giants in front of our big and great God? who has printed the Red Sea, a big sea, like Red Sea, which God has printed just for us to cross. And, you know, Pharaoh couldn't overtake them. So imagine our God cannot fight these giants. And you think God will just give us this uh, land of Canaan without us being able to fight? No, he yes. will never give us where we will get destroyed. Obviously not. He didn't bring us from 40, 30, 430 years of bondage to Israel to kill us? No, no way. He just brought us to give us a good land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And now we are doubting God's greatness, <laughs> his love for us. Yeah, and it was only these two spies, this Caleb and Joshua, who have that faith, that thermostat faith. And these 10 spies, this thermometer spies, faith spies, who were all scared with these giants all the time thinking about the giants and speaking about the giants and fear was there in their mind and what will this type of people do they will only speak fear all the time only speak about the giants and nothing else whereas Caleb and Joshua they were only talking about the goodness of God what God has done and what God is able to do so this thing teaches us how how we have to be, have our confidence in God and have our faith in God. You know, we have to be very much firm in our faith in God. When God says the word of God is active and so powerful, you know, anything is possible with the word of God. Anything, it can fight anything. If we are going through any situation, any difficult situation in our life, we just take the word of God, any scripture, it gives us so much of peace and comfort to our hearts that we can live with that. And everything is forgotten within a second. Nothing, we are completely normal. Like yesterday, I was going through so much of anxiety and restlessness i was feeling very uneasy and then i just called one of the sister and we were just praying and you know in a minute i was filled with the love of god Amen. i was completely feeling normal so this is the word of god this is how the holy spirit fills your heart with his love he gives you that peace brings you he makes you feel so good and his presence fills the air, like you feel that God is there everywhere, you know? And you don't know like what had happened like few minutes back. You have forgotten exactly. everything. And you're filled with that happiness and joy. So in this passage, 
this people who are the thermometers, the Bible, the word of God says, every one of the Israelites, because of what they spoke, they were thinking, you know, they were saying like, oh, we will not get victory. We will die. These giants will kill us. We will not be able to go to that land. And you know what happened? What they did, what they believed was, is they did not believe that God to help them in any way. Therefore, they opened their mouth and said, we cannot go in because we go in, we will be dead. The giants will kill us. This is what the ten men said and all the Israelites who were the congregation agreed. They were also with fear. You know, when somebody tells us something, now the media, now what is happening in Ukraine? Before it was COVID, like now Omicron came. And like everyone was so scared of Omicron, you know. But because we have faith, we are like saved. God kept us safe. Praise be to God. Nothing touched us because we were under the feathers of God's wings. God kept us safe under his wings. Nothing touched us. No COVID could touch us. Nor can any, any weapon formed against can prosper against. No weapon can prosper. Because God, we are you know, carved in his palms. God has kept us in his, carved in his palms. He has, we are engraved. He will keep us safe from every evil. He will not give any evil to come upon us. The devil, he's just waiting as a roaring lion to, you know, to just trap us with all this bad news. He will give us some news from home. When we call, make a call, somebody will tell us something and that news will make us dance. Sometimes it makes you go crazy, you know? When you listen to some news from home, oh, your son did this, oh, you know, this happened. You become so crazy, far away from your home. And this devil becomes so happy seeing you, you know, like you're worried <laughs> because he wants all that thing. But when the word of God is there, nothing can, you know, make us scared. Nothing, nothing. You know, before I never knew, as after joining JC and Emily, I know that these thoughts which come in our mind are from the devil. I never knew that these thoughts are like the, from the devil. I'm thinking it is like, you know, daily, whatever the daily life we are going through. But now I know that these thoughts are coming from the devil. So the moment they come, I just rebuke. I just take a, a second Corinthians 10, 5 and I just rebuke it. Saying you get, I just captivate those thoughts and I bring it to the obedience of Christ because devil can do nothing because now Jesus has finished everything on the prosperous. So why do we get scared of the devil? We don't have to worry about the devil when we have a great God who is there for us every minute, every second to guide us, to watch over us. So this is what happened to them. The, if they had this faith, what Caleb and Joshua had, this ten spies and the Israelites would have seen the land flowing with milk and honey. They were at the edge of the land, just outside, you know, at the border, just to take a step of faith and they would be in the land. But they couldn't do that because they doubted God. They were scared of the giants and they said they would kill them. So, Whatever they said, this giants, they said what and they said, whatever they said, they received. These words, what they said, got manifested. And they couldn't see the land flowing with milk and honey. It was only Caleb and Joshua who got stuck to the thermostat facing. God, you are the one who has chosen this land. You are the one who has given us this land. You are the one who started this land and brought us to this promised land and we are going with you, Lord. We are not afraid because you are on our side. So when the ten spies said we can't take over the land, they got exactly what they said. In the same way, when we are saying something, we have to be very careful of what we say because Proverbs 18, 21 says, life and death is in the power of our tongue. So we will get what we say. So we should be very careful when we say something. This is how the devil traps us. That so that we walk in his trap because he wants us to speak 
wrong things. So where were the 10 spies looking for, looking at? They were looking at the giants. And what about Caleb and Joshua? They were looking they, at what? Yes, they were looking at the land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. On Amen. Promises. Yeah, so in this passage, in this chapter, Numbers 13, we understand that all the 12 spies accepted that they were, there were giants in the land. There was no controversy or difference in that. They all had faith. All the 12 spies had faith, but there was a huge difference between their faith. 10 had faith in the giants, two had faith in our most high God. Amen. That through God's grace and ability, they will fight against the giants and finish them off. Ten were giant conscious, two were God conscious. Ten were grasshoppers mindset and two were giant killers. Now in our own very own life, do we have faith in our problems? We do, right? Yes. More faith in our problems. Problems, but yes. Not, yeah. We hardly have faith in God. Even me, even me, you know, Charles, I falter so many times. You know, like if it's not my sister Maria, I think today I wouldn't be sharing the word. Every time she told me, it's yes. been like three, four months. Every time she pushed me, I told her, no, sister, please. Please, sister, please. And look at you now. You've done an amazing <laughs> job. You, you know, know wow. yeah. always I did this, Charles. I always did it. No, no, sister, please, please. I want to say. And you know, then that's what, you know, she just told me. Okay, okay, fine. And you know, like when she said that, I said, no, Fatima, it's enough. Yes. It's enough. You have to do this. And it was like, I said, okay, God. Finish. I'm done with all these things. Praise I Jesus. have to be with you. And I first told her I want. Actually, I had given my name for e-writing, and then in global, so they nothing was happening there. So I spoke to Sister Maria because it was Sister Maria who you know saw this potential in me first when I joined DCLM. She was the one who made me to say the opening prayer. Then it was the recap. And then finally today I'm sharing the word of God and I feel God. so glad today. Praise Jesus, thank praise God. I just thank God for Sister Maria in my life. Today I share the pulpit just because of Sister Maria. Praise and I thank God for giving me this opportunity, you know, to share his word, which I never thought I would be able to do so. Never even dreamt about it. But our God knows everything for what we are, what is the purpose of our life in this world. And I thank your sister for everything. So, but, so now I think I've spoken everything about whatever the 10 spies had done and God, God, what God wanted the Israelites. What is the other thing God wanted the Israelites to see? God wanted the Israelites to see that he's always faithful to his promises. Can you, uh, Charles, can you give me Exodus 3, 7, 8? Exodus 3, 7, I'll just read that, yeah. Exodus chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse? 7 to 8. 7 to 8. Hold on a moment. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on a moment. Jesus. Jesus. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can. Okay. Oh. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites 
and the parasites and the hevites and the jebusites so here we see this is what god wanted for the israelites he just wanted them to trust him and that he is always faithful to his word he had already given them the promised land but they failed to trust him and they doubted him and they trusted the giants yeah but yeah. how do we see our problems how do we see our giants the way how we see our giants will determine our destiny yeah. if we see our giants with faith in god we can destroy them our mountains we can destroy them by the word of god and fighting them yeah so yes. but if we try to just glorify them and try to just keep on magnifying our giants then we will be like this israelites we will never see our promised land god is such a wonderful and amazing god who loves us unconditionally but we fail to acknowledge his love and in return we murmur when we we face trials we must remember that we can either be pitiful or powerful with god's word we cannot be both we can be pitiful or be powerful with the word of god am i right yes. with god there is always a new beginning there is no end to it there's always something new in god you know he has always something new we are the ones we think oh okay man i'm here i'm stuck here but no 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 he has always something good for us we think like oh and now like for me i like i was working in one company and i was thinking like god why this i'm here only i'm working like a donkey nothing is happening but you know like when i was in kuwait nothing was happening i was in that same thing i was so exhausted and tired in that life and i was praying to god take me out of kuwait lord i'm fed up of kuwait and you know one fine day like when i was in a meeting you know i got a prophecy and god said i'm taking you out of kuwait and i saw a dream you know i'm climbing a mountain and i'm going up a mountain and i saw a plant full of fruits and flowers oh. and i asked the pastor what's the meaning of this and he said god is making you fruitful taking you somewhere far and of course god brought me in 2010 to qatar i didn't even have a house you know we didn't even have a house we were staying in our sister's house but god is so awesome within a year he blessed us with a house he blessed us with everything the salary what i was getting in kuwait was nothing i god blessed me with four times the same salary what i was getting in kuwait praise god so what is so awesome we doubt god but no 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 he can do everything we didn't even have you know any amount in the bank when we wanted the house i went to buy a house like of 30 lakhs which i could you know still think of but then when we went to buy that house that house had some problems for the paperwork and then we my son and we started looking out for another house and we came across a house like of 60 lakhs and my son was saying mama we won't be able to buy this how are we going to afford so much money how will you pay you will go crazy paying these things and you know we we had that fear but then god had given me a word that you i'm going to give you a house of your desires you know and then our god never tells lies Very so we saw a house and we tried applying for a loan and then the loan like in goa i got the loan 80% and then i i'm not so good in all these financial things you know had no idea about anything so i came to qatar and i was so upset now what am i going to do about the 20% loan from where am i going to get and we had no financial help nobody was there to help us because you know we were like we had nothing so nobody could trust us you know you could say that nobody even our own family thought like oh fatima she cannot do anything she is like you know i was like that you know like a black sheep in the house nobody even thinks about you i was like that nobody considered me you know we were like that 
And then I, I said, God, how am I? And I, you know, I had called that pastor. And I said, Pastor, you said, God is going to bless me with the desires of my heart, the house. How am I going to get this loan? Now, how am I going to afford this house? And you know what he said, sister, trust God's word. It is going to happen. You will get the loan. Everything will be as you want. You will get the same house you like. And, you know, I came and I just happened to see my, uh, this thing, mobile, and I found one girl's uh, number. She was working in one of the banks, and I called her. And I told her, Sunita, am I liable to take loan in Qatar? Because I already took a, you know, I was in a sales, like, okay, I took a loan in Goa, so I cannot take a loan in Qatar. I swear, because I had no idea about all these financial things here. And then like she told Fatima, what is your salary? And I told her my salary. And she said, of course, you can take a salary. You can take a loan and you won't believe. I got the same amount I required to pay for the bank. And you know, like when we paid the 20%, we lacked only 50,000 rupees, which we had to pay for the paperwork. And my daughter is in Kuwait, you know. I just gave her a call and I said, baby, uh, all the paperwork is done. We only need 50,000 rupees. And my daughter sent me the 50,000 rupees. And we took no money from anyone. But God, God provided everything in full. And we got the house in 2011. I 2010, Feb, I came here. 2011, February, we walked in our house. The same house what I desired and I loved. This is how awesome God is. So how Amen. can we doubt our God? He's so amazing and so loving. And he does everything he promises. He never fails. Praise He's God. always Praise faithful. God. You know, Shalini, when I heard your testimony, the first time you gave about the Holy Spirit, and when he was in the jail, like how, how he was set out free from paying that 5,000 dirhams, you know how that testimony touched my heart. I can't tell you. I was like, Praise God. God, how, how can this happen? You know, your testimony, I told to so many people, so Praise many God. people in my family and to my friends, how God worked in your life. You know, people couldn't believe. I told even Muslims, you know, even even my job test, I, I tell to these Muslims, you know, I have even our receptionist, our, our CEO. I, I, I come and I confess everything to our CEO, you know. He is a Muslim, but he has faith in God, you know. And he will always tell me if something is there, Fatma, just keep in prayer. So I always share the word of God with him. And, and I came and I told him, you know, and they were like, my God, does God work out like that? I said, of course, God works like this. Only the, when we have a faith, a concrete faith in God, a mustard seed faith. But yeah, you know, exactly. we waver, we waver. Very soon we waver. You know, God is so awesome. God never desires that we remain in the wilderness. You know, he wants us to be in the promised land. Each one of us to enter into the promised lands. Let this message of this Israelite set an example before us. Not to doubt God, but to be like Caleb and Joshua, full of faith and courage, rather than doubt and complain. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Father. Help Thank us you. always to look up to you so that we never fall into the trap of self-pity. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh Amen. my goodness. Thank you, you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Now I have to say, and I can't stop. And no one can stop me. Okay, when you said this, right? It's not about Sister Maria. I did nothing. So when I can see something better in you, why should I hold it? True. And I should see something better in you, my darling sister. That's where I have to dig because that's the love of God hiding inside of you. That's the fire hiding inside of you. Second thing, look at your testimony. You were humble enough to trust in God how much he can do for you. And you know what he did? He did 1 Corinthians 2.9 for you. And briefly, I will say this is what it says. 
What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart conceived, is that what God has prepared for the people who love him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Right? And what you did, you went seeking for the kingdom of God. And you did Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God. Rest, everything will be given unto you. Right? And the third one. You did not choose him. He chose you. John 15. 16. Why did he choose you? To go and bear fruit. Second thing. When we say thermostat, thermometer. Right? By now you have to be thermostat. Amen. You have to, the temperature is already set. But why is that enemy coming and making you a thermometer? What right has he got over you? You are a child of a most high God. Thank you, Jesus. And the God is awesome. And Isaiah 55, 8 says, His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We don't know his ways. We don't know his thoughts. But you've experienced it, my dear. Amen. Every Amen. step. But something hits you. Little bit when something comes your way. You get affected by it. You must say, get out of me. I don't belong to you. You have no place in my life. Out you go. And, and stab him. And that is what we do. We fire bullets. And you know what the bullets are. It's the word of God. Even Jesus Amen. said, even Jesus said, it is written. And when he knows that you know what is written, he can't stand in front of you. You're too much for him to deal with. So that's what it is, Fatima. And, and, and yes, I know I pushed you a little bit because I knew he was pulling you and I wasn't letting him pull you. And look what you did. I don't want to say anything, but let other sisters speak. Look what you did to everyone. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. You Wonderful. were like a live wire. Yeah. You were like that bat. You know how you destroy the mosquitoes? <laughs> you know? nobody, nobody would say you said it the first time. Yes. So, And you know, early she came and this morning she's telling me, I hope I'll be okay. I said, shut up. <laughs> and then and then now she's saying, oh, I hope I can I read? And I said, well, you know what? You have how many notes? The moment you start talking, he's going to take over. It's not yeah. your word. It's his word. Praise God, sister. You blessed us with your teaching. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Internet. Yes. You know, this is what it is. We must never stay back with whatever little we have. This Internet is another one. She's another bullet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, so God, and that's why we are connected, Baba. That's why we are we all have something different and something unique to offer to the Lord for His glory. Amen. You know? So beautiful. Praise the God. teaching was very, very beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank we you. don't know that we have it in us until we deliver it. Yeah. Yes. True. Because actually the giants have filled, we are filled with those giants. We are fearful of the giants. We look at the giants. We don't look at our God. Like rightly, like Fatima said. Our eyes are focused on the giants instead of our God. That's true. That's very true. The fear comes. Yeah, and, and that's what he is. The Satan tries one small point, just a pinpoint, and that's where he starts. If you give him an opening, there you go. He's taken over you. Two. Praise Jesus. Anyone else Two. wants to share anything? My Divya darling, can you talk? I'm sure you'll have something to say. Yes, Sister Maria. I'm waiting for you to call. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Come on, fire your bullet. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> So as I was listening to Sister uh, Fatima's talk, while I could come for this class, I was studying about Joshua, the Jericho wall. So I was thinking, if my God is bigger than this Jericho wall, so if he has put that trust in me, so why not I put that trust in him? Amen. 
so that is what and the were the scriptures which sister told was really like a bullet just getting into me my heart and i was thinking okay i am on the right side now i am standing on the lord and who can be against me amen man thank you jesus praise god the more i trust my god the more he is doing it for me because he has already finished it on the cross for me and not just for me but also the for the people who are listening to it right now praise god thank you yes so praise jesus hey jesus. so yes so how do you feel fatima what divya said see she's that input she she gave you her feedback yes i feel so much joy and i just thank god so much i never thought sister i could do this you know it's before fun. even before i could come to pre- say share the word i was like coming inside the office going outside coming outside going <laughs> and it was rightly no it was rightly when divya was reading look what the holy spirit was doing <laughs> <laughs> and like i said no and i was like even when i went to the washroom i was saying god holy spirit you please take control of everything if i if i have said anything wrong or please sorry i don't know how to do it first time i'm doing it you take complete control over this session Praise because all of you nothing of me nothing of me holy spirit it's only you who is going to speak through me because i i have no knowledge of anything but you will do it for me and sister today it was like only him i i last night i sat till 4 o'clock he's gone the notes. i was taking down the notes for this whole time you know i was just writing down the notes listening to so many teachings because this was the first recap i did in my life Praise which made me, you know which was sister maria had given me the first recap and you know shans i was looking searching it for so many months ask her i told the sister i want to preach that same word and i was mm-hmm. searching i didn't get it and you know the day when she told me like i don't know you know if you it's up to you and that day when yeah. i told her no i am going to do it when i gave her the word i was at home you know just scrolling and you know this this uh, teaching of brother johnson just came in front of me and you know i was telling peter i said see this it came to me just like that that means holy spirit brought it to me saying yes, here's the teaching you wanted to preach so he brought it to me and mildred told me auntie you can do it 100% go ahead with it yes. don't you be scared of it you can make it she said and she said just ask the holy spirit to guide you and he, he will bring everything to remembrance and her mother did yesterday sister maggie she gave me the scriptures you know and then i told her you know she said when are you going to share the word sister i said with sister maria i said she is the one who always saw this potential in me and gave me this thing this pulpit to do it and then i told then she you know she is like so much into the word and i was telling her like sister you know so many scriptures so by heart and you know shall i know the scriptures but i you know i get mixed up in between like today thank like you know, and then you know you did a beautiful teaching fatima yeah thank you very so awesome yes and the holy spirit we could see the holy spirit just took over it wasn't about you at all yes sister it just and it's nothing about me don't say anything about sister maria nothing absolutely nothing I know sister but then like you gave me a push no you are coming for yeah 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 Other, you see if i don't push and nag i know no one else is coming so <laughs> once you push once you come here next time you don't come i'm fine with that <laughs> <laughs> who's doing no, next no, week maria i'll tell you whenever i want to do it i will myself tell you i will learn something and i will come to you again and i'll tell you that i want to share the word yes i'm happy with that it's nothing about me it's just you come here and with your what is in your heart you share it with others in your simple ways we yes. don't have maria yes yes my dear talking about you talking about pushing remind me of the mama bear who pushed uh, the baby bear <laughs> for the baby bear, bear to be able to be uh, to struggle and to get out of it and that's what you're doing to us all praise <laughs> 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 the lord 
<laughs> yeah. Jesus. God bless her. God bless her. So beautiful. It's so, you know, and, I, and look at this, listening to this, I get so much joy, you know, and I say, thank you, Jesus. And I always believe we are all connected like rosary beads. We are beautiful. Such a blessing, we are it's a great blessing what you're doing. Yeah, and it's, I mean, you know, it's nothing of me. It's just that joy that God puts in my heart. It doesn't, yes. you know, it's for Jesus. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for any of your sisters. You're doing it for the most high God. The Holy Spirit who's inside of you wants to speak. Yeah, so we don't grieve him. That's the worst thing we do. But once you have opened your mouth, look what is going to happen to you. Once you listen to your own teaching, look what it's going to do to you. Isn't it, Antoinette? Hello? Yes, praise God. That's true, sister. Yes. Isn't it Divya? Is Divya gone? What do you think, Baba? Yes, sister. That's right. The day yeah. when I took John 15, that pruning, yes. I am now getting groomed. Correct. By the way. Yes. And, and that's all about it. You know, how long are we in this world? You know, however little we can do, we just do it. Because Amen. we have a purpose to fulfill. We have an assignment to do. We just do it. Amen. And we have each other. We are not alone. We are put together. Look at that. All for the glory of God. Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Who's doing Lord. next week, Maria? Uh, next week is 15th, isn't it? Janelle mm -hmm. from Canada is got holidays. So she requested. So I have to... Okay. Yes, so I have to, otherwise another very special sister of mine is here. She's not done. So how I was pushing Fatima, I've been pushing her and I want her to come and speak here. She's going to do after that. Oh, wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> so these beautiful, tender, loving hearts with the Holy Spirit inside of them, you know, they are very precious. They are like a big bouquet of flowers to Jesus. We can't hide them. The Satan has no power over any of us. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sister. I have to thank you for this. No, so, no, no. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The God, of course, is dying. Thank God. God for everything. Yes. Praise God. Okay, okay, who's doing the closing prayer? Chance to it. I say the closing prayer. Yeah, let's end on it, Sari. Antoinette, you say okay, no. Antoinette, you say the closing prayer. Praise God. In the name of the Father, the Son, Father, the Son, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we praise you and thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, for you allow us um, to be able to get together and to be in your midst. Thank you for the obedience that, that each one of us, especially for uh, Sister Fatima today. Uh, being obedient and uh, to your word and say yes to preach your word today. We praise you and we thank you for that, Lord. All these seeds that you have planted in each and every one of us today, I am sure, Lord, they are all going to grow and we are all going to have a great harvest. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your word. Thank you, your Holy Spirit, for being with us, that spirit that allows us to fight our battle every day, to make us strong. Thank you and praise you. Thank you today, Lord. Each one of us, we all pick up a word that we are cherishing in our heart. Can be any word, Lord Jesus, that we are going to nurture. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We glorify your name and ask this prayer in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. God.